Well, hey there, team east to west and new to two. This is Tisha Clapp. I am bringing you the last day of our recruiting. Um, so this is part five. We are going to be talking about um, just what if the person that you're prospecting kind of goes missing, right? You don't hear from them and what to do to get them back. But first, just let me say congratulations to all of you so far on the first two thirds of our month. Um, yesterday, our auto ships cleared and so the dust has settled. So I want you all to go into your pulse today and look at where you are. Let me ask you this question. Um, if you've hit your minimum goals, are you gonna quit? Are you gonna stop and be done for the month? Or are you going to push through and run harder um, all the way to the end? Let me just encourage you to always be striving through the very end of the month. Don't stop when you hit whatever minimum goal you had. Instead, be looking to increase all the time. Um, push for title. Push for volume. And um, don't be satisfied with falling back and just um, growing complacent on the numbers that you've already achieved. I would say to work every single day of this business like it's your first and your last. And when you do that, at the end of the day, you can be proud knowing that um, all of the things that you've accomplished today were you kind of you just put it all out there, right? Um, so we're going to talk today about this process of closing your recruits, right? We're trying to get married, people. We've been dating them last week. This week we're engaged. They're with us. And we're trying to set that wedding date to get that enrollment appointment and get them on board with us. Um, there's going to be a little bit of closing language that we talk about today, but really I'm kind of leading into next week as you're going to talk about closing and follow up. Um, a few quick notes on closing is just to really be sure to create an urgency for your prospect. You want them to know that now really is the best time to join Rodan and Fields. And so I want you to think about that a little bit. Um, why now? Why is, why is this a great time? Well, it's summer. So um, people have some more flexibility, right? If your um, prospect is a teacher or perhaps um, kind of on a different work schedule to be home with kids for summer, then it's often a great time because they have a little more um, kind of play with their time. Also, um, um, it's just a great time because people are thinking about their skin, right? They're out in the sun. They are, um, and so it's a great time to sell sunscreen, to talk about being makeup free because we're all, of course, out at the beach or the pool um, without a face full of makeup on. So they're seeing a lot of their skin. So remember those things as you look at sort of the, the product side. And then we have so many great things happening on the business side right now, too. Of course, um, being number two in the premium skincare category, um, um, this Thursday, we've got Buck McMurray coming to Knoxville. So uh, any local prospects that you have now is a great time to join because then they'll get to be here um, as a consultant for Buck instead of just um, sitting out in the audience, you know, listening to him. So definitely anybody you can bring to that virtual event tonight and get them closed with that free regimen. I mean, there's just so many great reasons to become a Rodan and Fields consultant right now. Um, the other thing you want to tell them as you're closing with them is just that you want to lock arms with them, that you are committed to them growing, and that even though they're going to be in business for themselves, they are never by themselves. We have a lot of great helps and systems, just like these new to two videos that are going to get them off to a strong start, and you want to be sure to tell them that, um, especially too, if you're more flexible in the summer, another great reason for them to join you now, because you are going to be able to just really lock arms with them and give them that time and attention that they deserve to get off to a strong start. Um, and really, that's what people want to hear. They want to know that there's no risk, that there's no um, fear of failure, and that they have all the support that they need to start this business strong. Okay, so let's talk about what happens if you've been talking to somebody this week. You got engaged, right? They were with you. They wanted to do this business with you. They've said yes, yes, yes all along, and now you're trying to call them and they're not answering. Or perhaps you've invited them to our virtual event today tonight and they've not responded. Um, they've just really gone MIA. All you're getting on the other end of every message you send out to them is crickets. What do you do? All right, a couple things that you can do to sort of get them re-engaged in a very timely fashion. Number one would be get out of your house. Is this somebody that you can see somewhere in person? Go there, right? Um, if you're talking to your hairdresser and she's all of a sudden not responding to your messages, 
go. I don't care if you get your hair done, your nails done, go buy shampoo, whatever. Just go into the salon and see her face to face. How about if it's somebody, um, not right now, but like in the school pickup line. You know what? You need to get out of your car and you need to go into the building to get your child or, or get out and walk the line and talk to somebody as you're able. Um, just make sure that you take the effort to get in front of that person and to be able to have a live conversation with them. Um, and of course, you don't want to come at them like, hey, where have you been? Why, why haven't you called me back? Um, just talk to them about what's going on. Hey, I've missed talking to you. What's up with you? And then um, find, you know, a way to ask them. So, you know, I've noticed that um, you're, you've kind of slowed down a little bit with our, our enrollment appointment. Tell me, what are you thinking? What's going on? And go back to yesterday um, and, you know, listen again to answering the objections and just see what what kind of new may have um, have creeped in. The other thing to do is, um, if, especially if this is somebody long distance that you can't see in person, message them something completely random, okay, the random question. So it could be anything like, hey, what was the name of that restaurant that we ate at in New York that we both just loved? Or, or um, what is the beach you guys go to every summer with your kids that you always talk about? Um, you know, hey, do you have that recipe for whatever? So, you know, just the random question or um, or the random reach out. Like I um, had a friend that kind of went MIA. So I sent her a few pictures of us from um, college one day. She had lost her pictures in a move and um, didn't have pictures of, of our sorority formals and stuff. And so I just reached out to her with those pictures, not really even any um, commentary. Just started sending her some pictures, told her I'd been going through some boxes, which I had, and thought of her and then that reignited our conversation so um, sometimes they can just start to feel like all that they're hearing from you is Rodana feels and so when you kind of shift gears a little bit and just take it back to your relationship with the person sometimes that will reignite them again um, so I hope that's helpful just a way to kind of go back and, and here's the other thing guys just don't give up okay um, don't think that just because somebody doesn't respond to you that that means you need to be done with them I'm gonna be real honest here, I will go back and back and back and back. And really, until somebody gets a restraining order on me, I'm not going to give up on them, um, even if they've told me no. And obviously, you know, sometimes no really means no, but most of the time it means not now or I don't know enough. Um, it's not necessarily a forever no. It's just, um, no, this isn't really a fit right now. And so to continue to touch base with those people, and, and you'll hear about that a little more next week in follow-up, um, is just really a good way to stay in touch. I had... Um, just this month, I had a girl that I had messaged consistently on Facebook for two and a half years since I started my business. She was one of the first people I reached out to who had never, ever, ever responded to me um, in any of those messages. She um, reached out to me to place a product order. So just remember that um, people are watching you, people are reading your messages, people are listening to what you're saying, they're stalking you privately, and they're waiting for just the right time. So if somebody is not responding, don't lose heart. Um, you just keep doing what you need to do every day to kind of check off your boxes, right? You've got that checklist of work, you're um, reaching, doing your reach outs, you're doing your follow ups, you're doing your Facebook posts, and if you stay consistent with those things, this business will pay off for you. All right, good luck team and keep running. The month is still young.